A film projector is a storyteller. It does this by taking a film reel that consists of thousands of images. Light is then passed through each frame, projecting an image onto a canvas. These images in sequence can tell us a powerful story of happiness, sadness, or even humor. Our lives in many ways are like a film projector. Every action we take and word we speak builds the narrative of a story God is wanting to tell through us. Even though we all have different backgrounds, we have a choice of what we will project when the light of God shines through us. So what would someone see if they watched the movie of your life? Would they see light or darkness? Would they see life or death? Would they see love? Would they see grace? Would they see faith? Would they see Jesus? A very good morning to you and welcome to Church This Morning Online. We are in the sanctuary of Bacchusdale Baptist Church. It's just myself and Isabel. But you know, as we gather online today, it is all of us, all God's living stones coming together to glorify Him and magnify Him. Whether you are part of our church, whether you are not part of any church, you are more than welcome this morning. And we pray that the service will be a tremendous blessing to your life today. So welcome to our online service. It's so good to meet again together as God's people. This morning I'd like to read to you a scripture from Titus 2 verse 11 to 13. It says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And you know, it's so wonderful that God's grace is there for all people. And we just thank Him for that. And wherever you may find yourself this morning, maybe you feel on top of the world, even through a lockdown, or maybe you feel, you know, this has just been too much. It feels like the world is on top of you. We can know that God's grace extends to you this morning. And you know, we can come to Him right now with everything that's going on or not going on in our lives, however we feel, whatever's going on, and we can make that sacrifice of praise. And I encourage us as a church this morning, let's do that. Let's make that sacrifice of praise to the Lord, the fruit of our lips, giving praise to His name. And we trust God with you for breakthrough and God's glory and majesty to shine in and through every life and in and through His church. In a moment, we're going to worship together. Our worship team is going to lead us in a few songs this morning. And we're thinking this morning about the resurrection power of Jesus being made really alive in our lives. And we're also thinking about when you go through those tough times, when walking on the water, just keeping our focus squarely on our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Isabel, would you go ahead and open our service in prayer for us? Is this pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, what an honor it is to serve a God who is gracious yes. and you offer salvation to all. So Father, I pray wherever people are at this morning, they will be able to surrender to you this morning and accept you as their Savior. And I pray, Father, for whatever people are going through this morning, that you would meet them at their point of need. And Lord, we just want to magnify your yes. name and glorify your name and give you all the honor that you deserve. And we pray as God's people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church gathered online, you can sing out at home, I believe. Let's do that now as we worship the Lord together. There's a snake in my voice, there's a stone in my praise, pushing back when the darkest weapons fall. There's a power on my lips, even death can defy, when the name of our God is lifted. 
they say and see surrounds me you never said and you all stop to worship the Lord together this morning and that was really beautiful worship team thank you very much and you know it really is a call to surrender so this morning we encourage you to surrender to the Lord and allow him to work in your life absolutely you know and it's amazing just to be reminded by the lyrics of those songs that his resurrection power is alive in us and that when we walk upon the waters we can call upon his name and he is always there how beautiful it is to live beautiful lives in surrender to Him. I'm going to pray in a few moments for all of us, for the church, for what's going on in the world. And I think while I pray, we'll pray corporately all together. But before we do that, we'd like to create this moment for you to pray at home. Whatever your personal pressing needs are this morning as an individual or as a family, we're going to take time out right now in our service where you are going to bring your needs before the Lord this morning. So we're going to do that now. I'm handing over to you now to be doing that. Pray at home, please. Amen. You know, you don't need me to tell you that there is so much going on in the world right now, yeah, in our country, across Europe, and actually across the globe. And we really are praying and trusting God 
for healing. We really are praying and trusting God that His kingdom would come in powerful ways on this earth. We know at this time there are many going through many difficult things, many going through deep waters, choppy waters, difficult times. And we want to just lift a country situation up before the Lord. We want to lift the world up before the Lord. And I wonder if we can just do something right now. If we could all be praying together. Us over here, you at home, I wonder if we could just pray together as I pray. And let's get into the Spirit. Let's pray in the Spirit. Let's trust that the Lord will bring ultimately revival. You know, we're crying out for revival, for the Lord to bring that mighty end time revival. For souls to be saved, for lives to be transformed, for communities to see the transformational power of God at work. You know? Revival, revival, revival is, is our heart's cry. And let's be crying out to the Lord this morning and for healing and for God to be intervening in our world at this time. We truly need the healing rain from heaven just to come and fall and fill this earth with the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God. Let's pray. And as I'm praying, I'm encouraging you at home to be praying in the Spirit in this moment. Let's raise our voices together before the Lord as the church right now. Lord, as we raise our voices together as the church, Lord, we come in one accord. We come in unity and we pray, Lord, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for an open heaven over our country and open heaven lord over the entire globe lord we lift up our fallen and broken and and world that is filled lord with with so much stuff that is broken and a world that is being ravaged by a pandemic and lord we turn to you and we ask, Lord, that you would work miraculously in people's lives. If people are trusting you, we pray, Lord, work miraculously. We pray for healing in Jesus' name. We pray for salvation in Jesus' name. We pray for a return of the prodigals in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you would open doors. We pray that you'd open doors for jobs. We pray that you would open doors economically. We pray, Lord, that you would make a way, Lord, where there seems to be no way. We continue to lift up the NHS before you, frontline workers. We pray for your peace and your grace and your wisdom and your sustaining power. We pray, Lord, for the miraculous power that is yours to be poured out, Lord, upon our country and upon our planet at this time. We pray for our government. We pray for much wisdom. We pray for godly wisdom in Jesus' name. We pray for our schools, head teachers, governing bodies, teachers. We pray for strength and wisdom. We pray for all those doing school at home. We pray for your peace in homes. We pray for your sustaining power. We pray, Lord, that you would just help people, Lord, even with their minds and their hearts and their attitudes, Lord, fill lives with your Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, that you'd be glorified. We pray that you'd be glorified. We pray that you would come and work miraculously and send revival. Lord, we are crying out, Lord, send revival, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Folks, praying is such a big part of church life at the moment. Intercession is such a big part of church life at the moment. And I encourage you in your life groups to carry on with the mandate from the Lord to be interceding to being prayer warriors and as individual Christians, as we saw last week, we are living stones. 
We saw about the, we spoke about the priesthood of all believers. You know, the Lord may call on you at any time to pray specifically for our country, to pray specifically for the world or a particular nation He places on your heart, or specifically for someone. I want to encourage you in that moment, whatever you're doing, take that time to pray and intercede. And again, I'm going to plug life groups right now. If you're not part of a life group, I really invite you to join one of our online life groups during this time as we gather to be prayer warriors and intercede in Jesus' name. Folks, you know, sometimes we just put worship on in the evenings and just enter into worship and prayer and just start praying and there's a flow of the spirit yes for our lives and for our family and for our home but also for others and i encourage you just to be open to the lord just to be worshiping at home and praying at home and into his word at home during these times are we going to turn to the word now as we come around our offering this morning offerings always part of our worship year at the church and Isabel is going to speak to us about our giving to the Lord this morning. So this morning, thinking about our offering talk, I'd like to share with you the widow's offering in Luke 21, verse 1 to 4. When the rich put their money into the temple treasury, something caught Jesus' eye. He saw the widow putting only two very small copper coins into the offering. And, you know, I really believe that that got Jesus' attention because she didn't give out of her wealth. She gave only what she had to give. And this morning I'd like to encourage you, whatever you have, you know, present that to the Lord as an offering and also something of surrender to the Lord because God looks at the heart and I'd like to encourage you whatever you have to give to the Lord make sure you give it from the heart out of the love that you have for him now God bless you it's such a beautiful encouraging word on a heart of surrender when you come to the Lord there's different ways to give in the life of the church and one of the ways we can give is online on our website there's an online giving portal there that will take you through when you click on there god bless you as you give your tithes and offerings and now for a brief update on love in action Love in Action is the partnership between Buckers Hill Baptist Church and Rivers International. And this week we are privileged to be able to provide essential food supplies as well as essential toiletry supplies to families in a school not too far away from us. And further afield in India, we have fed 100 children every day in the month of January. So thank you for your prayers, your contribution and for all those who have volunteered. And it's more than just feeding, however important that is in such times as this. In India, the gospel also goes out to the families, to the children who they are reaching through providing food for. And this afternoon, we're going to be ministering yet again via Zoom to pastors, church leaders, as well as missionaries. So please do keep us in your prayers as we impart teaching to Mumbai via Zoom this afternoon. Up next, we have Carly and Stacy. We're going to be bringing us our youth and children's talk for today. So over to Stacy and Carly. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to um, the Sunday session with Carly and... And Stacey, I can see that oh. actually, have you, got an, have you got a bike? Oh, I've just got my new bike. It's so much fun. It's so cool. Look at these little bad boys. Look at the wheels. Oh, oh it's so amazing. Awesome. Look at them, Carly. They're like wicked. They spin. They're so big and bulky. Oh, they're really nice. Oh, I can pick up some speed in these, girl. <laughs> I really can. Oh, brilliant. So basically, um, so how do you, how do you, what do you have to do to ride your bike? Do you just sit on it or is it an electric bike or? Oh Carly, duh. 
Oh, come on now, you know what to do. When oh. you get on your bike, you have to use these things. It's the pedals. Oh, the pedals, the pedals. Yes. And that's what gets the bike moving. Totally. Oh. If you don't use the pedals, you actually don't really go anywhere. Oh, okay. And then you just stay where you are. So, to be honest with you, it's a little bit like our Christian lives. If we're not surrendering to Jesus, and if we're not letting him get us moving, then really we just stay still. What, so we just don't sort of like really go anywhere? Well, it's like we don't grow, we don't move forward, we just stay put. It's the same, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is really, yeah. If I didn't move the pedals, then I wouldn't have just shot past you like really coolly and you wouldn't have seen how fast I was going. Yeah, exactly. But actually, can I just say you should be wearing a helmet, Stacey? I know, I know. So Listen, make sure next time for safety you wear a helmet. Listen, we're not out on the main road. I was just showing you. You are just showing me. So let's have a think about it. Like, let's use that as an example. Like, you know, we want to think about... Um, what we want we, what we want to encourage each other in today is like to yeah. keep moving to keep moving closer to jesus to keep doing the things of god to keep doing the things that we've been sharing we keep week in and week out to keep going with jesus because yeah. he's got a plan and a purpose for each of our lives and Amen. you know what sometimes we do feel like we're stuck but oh. god is always working god is always moving he's like he's like constantly pedaling yeah say like we're on the bike and we feel like we're just stuck he's pedaling behind us as yeah. well but actually he needs us to pedal as well because we're in a partnership with him we have to keep going together yeah so listen guys you know this week if you go out on your bikes yeah when you're pedaling, think of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> think of Jesus and think, we're pe he's pedaling with me. He's pedaling for me, but I've got a pedal as well. Yeah. So that's Amen. the, um, that's what we want to think about today. And yeah. so, you know, we really want to pray for you all this week. We want to pray that you have a deeper encounter with Jesus this week. Yeah. We want to pray that, um, all the things that we've been learning uh, over our sessions, all the things that all of us together have been learning, we keep putting into action and we keep moving and we keep pedaling and we keep Jesus right at the center of our heart. Wow, a very encouraging word from Stacy and Carly this morning. And let's remember to keep Jesus at the center of our heart. And I just love that theme of surrender running through. So let's keep that in mind, just to keep Jesus at the center of our heart and to surrender to him. Up next, Ruby and Rain will be reading the scripture to us. And then after that, prepare your hearts for the word. Kevin's going to be bringing us the word of God this morning. So we pray that the Lord bless you abundantly today. Amen. Good morning, and today we're going to be reading from 1 Peter 2 verse 9 to 18. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves to the Lord's sake, to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority. All true governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people but do not use your freedom to cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honour the emperor. Slaves in reverent fear of God. Submit yourselves to masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. I'm really trusting that God's word will make a major impact in your life today. We're in the book of 1 Peter. Last week we looked at being living stones and we looked at being the priesthood of all believers and we thought about being mobile priests and portable temples you know folks i said it last week and i'm going to say it again my heart longs for the day when the church can be living stones impacting the world in hundreds of places everyone being a living stone being that portable priest the priesthood of all believers building bridges with our community as i said in hundreds of places and if god allows thousands of places even across the globe 
again, I'd ask for prayer for this afternoon as we connect with India. I'm speaking to pastors and missionaries and leaders in Mumbai this afternoon, bringing them some teaching from God's word and leadership principles from the word of God this afternoon. And every time we've ministered into India, we've seen God break out with amazing miracles, words of knowledge for specific miracles with response from people just being healed by the Lord Almighty. So pray for us this afternoon. We are being living stones. We are being mobile priests and portable temples. Imagine the church, you the church, we are the church, being in many places at once, impacting your world with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And this is our theme verse for the year, taken from Isaiah 28, 16. And I read from the prophet Isaiah in the Bible. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious stone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes will never be shaken. And during these times we're living in shaking times and the gospel of Jesus goes out to do what only Jesus can accomplish through the power of the Holy Spirit in people's lives so we are in 1 Peter this morning chapter 2 from verses 9 to 18 you know the beauty of going through a book in the Bible in its entirety in a preaching program is that nothing slips our attention Part of the challenge of that is you can't just skip out over something or gloss over something or pick a favorite topic, especially when the topic in scripture is a bit contentious or a little bit difficult to grasp hold of in a practical living way. And this is one of those scriptures this morning that if we take to heart what the Lord is saying to us, he will impact our lives for kingdom glory and for kingdom expansion. And this morning I'm talking to you about turning an upside down world upside down. Turning an upside down world upside down. We're going to be look at, looking at building in God's kingdom. And often when we're building God's kingdom, the way God builds in and through our lives is in a counter-cultural way. Living in God's kingdom can often be counter-cultural. And kingdom living can be such that we live it in such a way that it looks like we are turning an already upside-down world upside down. And we see something about this in the book of Acts 17 verse 6 and I'm going to just seed this verse right here because it's going to help us this morning so they were looking for Paul and Silas and look at what verse 6 says but when they did not find them they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city crying out these who have turned the world upside down have come here too they were saying that the disciples had turned their world upside down and now they are here too. Imagine us being living stones wherever God has placed us. We being the church wherever we are and we turn the world upside down for his glory. Imagine the neighbor saying, oh, oh those people from Bakersdale Baptist Church are turning the world upside down and now they're my neighbor as well. You know, folks, every single one of us can make a difference. We are born to make a difference for Jesus in this world. And we want to impact our world while we are still living on planet Earth. While we still have breath in our lungs, let's be proclaiming Jesus and living in the power of the Spirit. After all, no one lives forever. After all, for the best of us, life is too short. We want to know that our life has counted for something of kingdom value, of eternal value. We want to be sure that we didn't waste our time on things that just don't matter. Jesus said this in Mark 8 verse 36. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul? That's a frightening thought because it means you can be at the top of the ladder in the world's standards only to realize that the ladder's been leaning up against the wrong wall. So much is at stake. We need to take heed of what God is saying to his church. We've seen in Peter that we are called aliens and strangers in this world. Christians, 
have generally done their best work for the kingdom when times have been its toughest. In the early church, Christians faced repeated waves of persecution. Repeated waves of persecution from the authorities of their time. And it's to this struggling church that Peter is writing. They are scattered in a number of places. And this is what he says to them. Don't be surprised if times are tough. You are aliens and strangers in the world. It's not supposed to be easy yet. You know, another thing about this is that unbelievers watch us. Otherwise, how would they know we're turning their world upside down? And they draw conclusions of what we believe and how we live, even in difficult times, even during a lockdown. Is Christ being built in and through our lives? And we need a plan for making a maximum impact for Christ, even during lockdown. Our passage this morning offers three key steps we must take to live counterculturally, to turn an upside-down world upside down to make a maximum impact for the gospel, for the kingdom, for Christ. Are you ready for these three points? Number one, we see this in 1 Peter 2, verses 11 to 15. My first point is this, live good. Live good. Peter shares three specific steps here on how to live good before God and before others. First of all, then, first verse 11, he says, abstain from fleshly lusts. I told you at the beginning of the sermon, there's some big stuff here this morning. Godly living always begins with forsaking sin. The word abstain is the same word Paul used when he wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from Every form of evil. The fleshly lusts are literally at war with our souls. If we are to live good, if we are to live, in other words, godly lives, we must forsake all that fleshly stuff. Folks, you know, as well as I know, that we are at war and the real battle is not on the outside. It's on the inside. Every believer is at war with the desires of the flesh that try and drag them down. All sin starts in the mind. They often say, you know, the greatest battlegrounds on earth is found in between your two ears. All sin starts in the mind. If you can win the battle of your mind, you can win the battle on the outside. And isn't it an amazing thing to think about? When you think about the armor of God as seen in Ephesians, that we have the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation to protect our mind. As believers living in a counter-cultural kingdom, we cannot and must not accept the world's standards. As citizens of heaven, we will always be square pegs in round holes. The danger is that we will try to pound to fit and paint to match so that we look like and act like the world. Well, there he says, you know, live good by abstaining from fleshly lusts. How else do we live good? We see in verse 12, have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, an honorable conduct. Peter returns to one of the basic themes of his epistle, that of holy conduct. He reminds us vividly that God is not merely concerned with our profession. He is concerned with our possession. I'm going to say that again. If you're taking notes, write this one down. God is not only concerned with our profession. He is concerned with our possession. In other words, with our lifestyle and our impact in his kingdom. He desires that we live holy and honorable lives, that our conduct may be observed as good by outsiders. After all, it was Jesus who said in Matthew 5 verse 16, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And then, living good. Finally on this point, 
Peter says, put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. We see that in verse 15. As Peter continues on the theme of living good lives before God, before others, he provides a list of specific examples of how that kind of lifestyle should be carried out in day-to-day living. He begins by saying that we should submit ourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Big word, submit. And we've been talking in our services, Isabel and myself, as we're hosting these services about surrender. And there's such a sense that God's getting his people into a new state of surrender. And this washes in with this submitting ourselves. This should be done in response even to government leaders and authorities. And of course, the context of the day into which Peter was writing was the context of the reign of Nero, and he was the emperor of Rome. And if you know anything about him, one of the things you may know about him is that he used Christians as living torches. He lit them up in his garden. Such was the persecution on Christians. And this is what Peter has to say about submitting to government leaders and authorities. However, this does not mean that we violate the higher law of, laws of God. It does not mean that we violate the higher laws of God. I said that again, just in case you missed that. This does not mean that we ignore the lordship of Jesus Christ. It was something Peter himself had to say about this. And you can read what he had to say about this when he was before the Sanhedrin, that highest court of justice in ancient Israel, that supreme council in ancient Israel. And you can read all about that in Acts chapter 5. We must remember that we are citizens of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom, turning an upside down world upside down. When those without Christ see peace in us, when they see joy in us, when they see truth in us, when they see forgiveness and strength, when they see purity and compassion, when they see hope, when they see all these virtues in us, over a long period of time, they will sooner or later ask the big question, what makes you different? What makes you different? different and that opens the door of the kingdom that opens the door that starts to turn an upside down world upside down it was the late Ruth Graham who said a saint is a per- is a person who makes it easy to believe in Jesus I think Peter would agree how many of us became believers because of the influence of someone else During the first lockdown, an old schoolmate of mine who I hadn't actually spoken to since 1990, that's a long time ago, that was our last year of high school, so you can kind of work out my age here right now. But anyway, an old schoolmate of mine contacted me from a different country. You know how life goes, people move around the world and you lose contact, but Facebook starts to bring and social media platforms start to bring people back together again. And he contacted me from a different country and he said his pastor doesn't have time to help him and pray with him. Can I please find some time to pray with him? And I said, yes, let's set up an appointment as quickly as possible. And this guy knew me for more than 12 years because he knew me from preschool all the way through to my final year concluding high school. And he said to me, all through his childhood and teenage years, he watched my life and he consistently saw Jesus in me. And that's why he contacted me. It took him 30 years to contact me. But praise the Lord. You know, sometimes these things take time. And as we prayed, we sensed that God was turning an upside down world upside down. And his kingdom was expanding. So how do we live? Counterculturally for God's kingdom. How do we turn an upside down world upside down? Number one, live good. Number two, live free. Live free. Jesus has invited us to enjoy the kingdom life of freedom in Christ. Only when Jesus has set us free, only when we know the truth of Jesus, are we truly free and free indeed. And you can read about that in John 8, verse 32. 
The freedom that comes from Jesus is not to be used as an excuse for sin. Look what Galatians, the book of Galatians, has to say about this in chapter 5, verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another, one another humbly in love. As soon as we misuse the freedom that Jesus has given us, it's all too easy to get entangled once again in the yoke of slavery and slavery to sin and the stuff that just doesn't belong in a believer's life. You see, authentic freedom is ours only when we walk in the Spirit, only when Jesus is ruling and reigning as both Savior and Lord of our lives. We live in submission. We live in surrender. Big words, I know, but it brings so much life. I told you this word would impact all of us today. The highest calling in this life is to use our life as servants of God. We see this in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 16. The freedom which comes from Jesus continues to flow in and through our lives as we serve Jesus, as we serve others, as we continue to flow in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Freedom and liberty misused is very much like a mighty river flooding its banks and bringing terrible destruction upon all in its path. However, freedom and liberty used as it should be in Jesus' name is like a mighty river flowing within its banks, bringing life and refreshment to all who drink from its waters. How do we turn an upside-down world upside down? Number one, live good. Number two, live free. And number three, live surrendered. Number three, he lives surrendered. We see this in 1 Peter 2, verses 15 to 17. Peter continues his teaching on the important subject of being servants of God by listing specific examples on how we must do that. And again, he's writing within the context of acute suffering of Christian sisters and brothers at the hand of Rome and at the hand of the established religious rulers. So, how do we live a surrendered life? Well, according to Peter, then, verse 17, honor all people. The word honor is the same word Jesus is telling us in the Bible when he says to honor a father and mother, and that we should honor the Son of God even as we honor the Father. This is a mark of the authentic Christian lifestyle, that we honor all people as the Lord does. We never, ever violate others, nor use them as objects. We are to love and honor people. How do we live in surrender? According to this context today, number one, honor all people. Secondly, love the brotherhood. Again, we see that in verse 17. Agape love. The Jesus kind of love must flow freely and generously from the life of every believer. Imagine living stones. Imagine the church being, reaching out into the world. Imagine being priests, building bridges for the kingdom. And the love of Jesus is flowing out of us. You see, this love is another mark of the authentic Christian lifestyle, that we are to love one another. Jesus himself said that in John 13, 35, and I quote from the Bible, By this will all know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. He has another way we live in surrender. In verse 17, we see fear God. The fear of God is to live in reverential, submissive awe of the Lord God Almighty. The appropriate fear of God is one of the greatest needs of the contemporary church and contemporary Christian today. We need a revival, I believe, of the fear of God in our lives because our worlds will be turned upside down to his glory. We have made God all too familiar. We have tended to create God in our own image. 
and try and bring him down to our human level. You know, we need to see the Lord high and lifted up in all his glory, in all his might, and then we will bow down in awe in his presence to revere and worship him. How do we live this life of surrender? Again, in verse 17, we see something else. Honor the king. It's easy to honor a good king. It's easy to honor a good Leader, however, Peter was asking his readers to honor no one less than Nero himself. That is another mark of authentic Christian lifestyle, to love even those who would persecute us. And in verse 18 we see, be submissive. Servants, be submissive. Peter addresses quite a topic here of servanthood, which is central to the Christian lifestyle. It's all too easy to slip into a self-centered lifestyle where it's all about me and it's all about me and it's all about me and we actually don't serve anyone or when we do it's just to boost the ego. All too often, Christians prefer God to fall into the flow of their lives and to subscribe to their wishes. Of course, This is challenging. One of the basic requirements of the true believer. To follow Jesus as Lord in obedience and to serve him is not an option for the authentic Christian lifestyle. It is an imperative. And if we're going to make an impact in our world, if we are going to turn an upside down world upside down, we need to understand the submissive thing. Peter is pointing out that Christians, and as Christians, they are not just free to do whatever they want. They're not just free to do their own thing. Of course they are, but it may not be profitable for the entire body when we just go ahead and do our own thing anyway. To submit is to be subject. All Christians are subject to the ordinances of man for the Lord's sake. 1 Peter 2 verse 13. 1 Peter 5 verse 5 talks about submission of younger Christians to their elders. 1 Peter chapter 3 talks about submission in family lifestyle, in a marriage, a Christian marriage. And all Christians, according to 1 Peter 5 verse 5, are to be submissive to one another. You see, the authority structure in the universe was established by God. This is all a heart issue. Surrender, submission, when it comes down to it, is an absolute issue of the heart. It's an attitude of the heart. And when we live in surrender to the Lord, it shows an attitude of the heart. This text is God's answer to the anti-authority spirit of this age. And by anti-authority spirit, I mean an anti authority spirit to God anti God's authority this seems to be so much the spirit of this age hey I told you at the beginning of this message it wasn't going to be easy it's going to be impacting that's why we've got to guard our hearts because from our hearts flow the issues of life everything flows from our heart a beautiful surrendered submissive heart to the Lord will bring a beautiful flow into life But unfortunately, we won't go into the negative, but you can imagine what the opposite and the negative of that is. These verses actually give us a framework, a beautiful framework for understanding how Christians should relate to the various circles of authority in which we live. By circles of authority, I'm referring to the different spheres of life. There is an authority structure or a circle of authority in every sphere of life. At home, there's an authority structure. At church, there's an authority structure. When kids go to school, the school system, there's an authority structure. In the classroom, on the job, in the office, in the factory, in the shop, in human government. I mean, there's an authority structure when you even go down to your favorite shop. If you want to, uh, please don't do this. You'll be breaking a commandment, one of the Ten Commandments. You can walk out of the shop with an item of goods if you want to. But the authority structure says, hey, you've got to pay for it. We are submitting, even when you're buying your 
favorite thing in your favorite shop. We are within a circle of authority. You know what? People cannot work together in any endeavor without some system of authority. A church, we're not just here to do as we all individually please. That wouldn't be living stones. That would be a chaotic mess. That would be a pile of rubble. We are called to fall into alignment with God's purpose and the vision which he has spoken over the church. There is such a difference between godly authority and being authoritarian. I do not believe that authoritarian leadership is of the Lord at all, but I do believe in the authority of God. Peter writes to help us know how we should relate to these various circles of authority in our lives. Sometimes those circles intersect and overlap. Often we will find ourselves dealing with people who lack wisdom, discretion, prudence, foresight. And sometimes because of the circles of authority, we may even having to find ourselves submitting to them. How you respond is absolutely key. And we need to see how God relates to all the circles of authority that he has placed over us. Submission is first and foremost an attitude of the heart. Submission is not blind obedience because it is an attitude of the heart. Submission doesn't mean we don't work to make a situation better. And it doesn't mean that you've got to stay where you are indefinitely but it is an attitude of the heart. In conclusion this morning, we've been talking about turning an upside-down world upside down. We've been thinking about the kingdom of God coming in power in and through us as believers. We've seen that we've got to live good lives. We've seen that we can live free. We've seen that we live in submission. So you see, we do live in a kingdom that is upside down in an upside down world. Our Christian lifestyle is Countercultural, but it has to be that way in order for the kingdom of God to expand in power. We can all make a maximum impact for Christ only if we do things His way. And the invitation to you this morning, in Jesus' name, in living in this upside down kingdom, in an upside down world, living in a countercultural way, is to say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I want to be part of your flow. I want to live the good life you've called me to. I want to live as the free person you've called me to be. And I want to be in submission, in other words, in surrender to what you will have for my life. After all, wasn't it Jesus who taught us to pray, not my will, Father, but your will be done in Jesus' name. I pray that this will impact you. And I pray that there would be a great release of God's flow, of his stream, of his authority, of his life, and of his freedom in you and for you, in Jesus' name. We're going to worship together right now. After we've worshipped together, we're going to come back, and I'm going to be talking to you about a commitment to Christ. And after that, I will give the blessing, our benediction for today. So I'll see you in a bit.
what incredible words in that song, being high in surrender. And thinking about surrender, I'd like to talk to you about your friendship, your relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've drifted away. Remember, the Lord will never move away from you. But sometimes we do drift. Or maybe you've never given your life to the Lord. I would like to give you the opportunity now either to recommit your life to the Lord or indeed surrender your life to Him for the first time. If that is you, would you follow me in the following prayer? Let's pray this. Dear Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. I acknowledge you died on the cross to forgive me of my sin and you rose again from the dead. Thank you. I receive your gift of salvation into my life today. Thank you that I'm now a Christian. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, head over to our website after the service and there's a button called I Have Decided. If you click on there, it will give you a little bit more information about your decision for Christ. And remember, that was your first step that you've just taken and a very big congratulations to you. We're coming now to the end of our service. We look forward to connecting again online with you next Sunday and online for our life groups during the week as well. Now for the blessing for today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And once again, thanks for joining us today. For more information about our church, head over to our website and keep an eye on our Facebook page as well for updates in church life. God bless you.